note, I'd like to give the floor to a representative of the United Nations Watch. Thank you. Mr. President, we meet today in the Council's first debate on specific countries. The agenda item is, quote, the human rights situation in Palestine and other occupied Arab territories. The rest of the world only gets treated next week in the same amount of time allotted for one country today. Let us consider the title of today's item. Should we judge this book by its cover? Not if we listen to the UN's own Department of Public Information. It published a chart last year called Commission on Human Rights versus Human Rights Council, Key Differences. The chart addresses the infamous agenda item from the old commission, virtually identical to the one today, titled Violation of Human Rights in the Occupied Arab Territories, including Palestine. What is so interesting, however, is that this is not what the UNDPI called it. Instead, it did something rather brave. It recognized the item for what it really was, calling it, and I quote, the agenda item targeting Israel. Mr. President, the chief promise of reform was to end the bias and double standards that ultimately destroyed the old commission, the chief example of which was this very item. Yet today, we reconvene under the same infamous item, in the plain words of the UNDPI, quote, the agenda item targeting Israel. Plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. In the same chart, the UNDPI promised a key difference with this new council, that it would, and I quote, start with a clean slate. Mr. President, where is the promised clean slate? And if it is not a clean slate, what kind of a slate is it? Well, here's what the leaders of the UN think. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon denounced, quote, the Council's decision to single out only one specific regional item, given the range of human rights violations throughout the entire world. High Commissioner of Human Rights, Louise Arbour, similarly condemned this item as, quote, selective. When this was adopted in June, my country, Canada, recalled that this item violates the Council's own principles. There is a point of order raised by the delegation of Egypt. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. But I think somebody should stand to defend the Secretary General and the High Commissioner, because I do not believe the Secretary General used the expression denounced, nor Mrs. Arbour used the word the expression condemned. And I stand to be corrected. Thank you. Thank you. Would you continue your statement, please? Sorry, we have a point of order on behalf of the delegation of Israel. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Indeed, I'm asking what's going on. It is impossible that the delegate of Egypt will stop every time this discussion and not allowing the NGOs to speak freely. Sometimes the NGOs are saying things, and other members too, which are unpleasant to the Egyptian representative. I have been sitting here since 10 o'clock in the morning and listening only bashing Israel. I think that we should give the floor to the NGOs without any further interference. Thank you. Let me go back to the speakers on my list. You may finish your statement, sir. When this item was adopted in June, my country, Canada, pointed out that this item violates the principles of the Council itself, universality, impartiality, objectivity, and non-selectivity. Targeting any UN member states at Canada is, quote, politicized, selective, partial, and subjective. Canada asked to call a vote, but was denied the right to do so. In July, Canada, the United States, and Poland, a member of the European Union, filed official proceedings to challenge this violation of the rule of law. Soon, this item and the package under which it was adopted will go before the General Assembly. If member states heed the voice of the Secretary General, of the High Commissioner, and of principle, they will restore the promised clean slate by voting to remove this biased item. Thank you. Thank you for your statement.